what's good what's good back with a new video man today man we got a a a, a duel that i think is um very wise in the game and always giving the back knowledge always doing things for the community the title of this video is your circle is gonna get smaller when i seen this title i already had an idea of where he was going i haven't watched the video yet but i wanted to share this with my audience because i think bro you know people like this we can learn some from this man is out here with a cameraman and himself enjoying nature, enjoying life, man. It's look beautiful out there. And, you know, I got an experience of my circuit had to get smaller as well. So let's dive into this, man. Yeah, man, as your, as your life grow, man, your circle going to get smaller. And, you know, one thing, one thing our people love to do. Let me tell you something. I always, I always see people having success on Facebook, on the Internet. Or whatever, and and I look at the comments, and uh, it's always those little small, slight jealousy comments. Don't forget the little people. Mm. Instead of saying God bless you, just that. Don't forget where you came from, knowing damn well that don't nobody. I don't care how bougie I am and how successful I am. I know where the hell I'm from. Facts, and I and I agree. I don't think nobody can forget where they came from. Man, I would consider myself a middle class black man now, with a middle class family. But I came from the worst of poverty. I came from a house that had nothing in it. You know, it rained. We had to put buckets or all around the house. My dad used a hot plate to cook me baked beans and, and hot dogs. I ate that for weeks, days. I didn't know no better. Now that I'm older, I'm like, man, ain't no way. But back then, I loved it. I used to, I didn't care that my dad wasn't able to cook every type of food. It was me and my dad, and, you know, in the situation he was in, the situation he was built, he wasn't able to he wasn't able to move into a nice house. We, you know, at, but eventually, after five or six years of living in a house where we had to pee out the back door, he had to use a hot plate to cook. We had to, um, you know, put buckets all throughout the house because the rain, would, whenever it rained, it would rain through the roof. We moved into a hunting shed, uh, you know, the hunting cabinet where people go hunting. Like something like you see this right here, this nature. You see a, a, a little cabin, one room cabin where they all take their hunting trips. And and we that was where we lived in for 10 years of my life, you know, so... I, I can never forget where I came from. That's why I try my best to gain knowledge and, and gather information around the world and bring it back to my people, bring it back to my family. Like, things help us grow, but that don't mean we have to go back and try to live in those environments. We see these rappers constantly going back into their hood, getting killed. Sometimes you have to help from a different, a, a distance. I know what projects I came from. Nice. Morton Simpson Village, King, better known as Kingston Project, Birmingham, Alabama. You know what I'm saying? Zip code, everything. Like, you mm -hmm. ain't gonna forget where you came from. So, what, nice. the fuck does, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? You can't take everybody with you. Mm. Okay, I know you done grew up and you went to school, high school, elementary school. You know, I, I see a lot of NBA, NFL players, and different people struggle with that. Because, man, you got to realize just sometimes what God, what God has for you is for you. Wow, man. I had my own business. And I heard the stories, man, don't hire your family member. I wasn't trying to hear that. I had a pallet business at the age of 24. And I hired all my older cousins that do drugs and drink and do things illegal. And I was still dealing with illegal life myself, but I had got my own business. And I was trying to change that. And I was working seven days a week. But, you know, I ended up losing my business because I relied on family members. They seen how much money I, I was making. And I told them I didn't know no better. I was like, yeah, I make this much, but I can't pay you the same that I make because if I'm running this business, my business, I got to pay for the equipment. I got to pay for the storage. I got to pay for the traveling expensive to get these pallets to the to the uh, shop you know i gotta pay for the equipment when it's broke i had to buy all that stuff and it costs a lot of money air tanks generators um 
units to store the pallets in. Like, man, I, it, it cost so much money to run your own business. And, and I was doing amazing. I had my family member. And, you know, one day they just, man, you don't pay us enough. Bro, I'm paying y'all a lot of money and I'm buying y'all drugs and I'm buying y'all alcohol. But they end up quitting on me, you know, all of, out of jealousy. I had another cousin that couldn't do it. He was telling them, man, ain't no way y'all working for that little nigga. Like, bro, what? I'm 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 giving y'all good money every week. You you got all kind of felonies that you couldn't get a job. Your your little cousin hired you, and they looked at me like I did, like I should have gave them way more than like, bro, come on, man. Come on, dog. You know, so you know, you live and learn, man. It's a lot of more stories I could tell you how I done help friends and family. Like I got onto a job. I, I got my friend onto the job. Guess what? I ended up getting fired because he didn't want to work. So because I brought him in, they ended up firing up both. Wow. And I was working hard there every day. But because I brought him in, they got rid of us both. And we was making a lot of money. 1500 every two weeks. I mean, 1500 every Thursday. 1500 every Thursday. Every Thursday, I was getting fifteen and $3,000 painting water towers. And I ended up getting let go, but I ended up getting back on. But I got let go with him because I brought him in. But, you know, eventually, um, you know, after doing some talking and, you know, some communication, they ended up bringing me back. But it was crazy, man. It ain't for everybody else. That's right. Right. You've been out here working. Working your ass off on the football field. How many folks showed up to give you some Gatorade? Wow. Right? Wow. You want to use somebody's car? But how, hey, Tanya, can I wow. use your car? But did it? Did, but did you come the day before and ask Tanya, can I take your car to get it washed? Wow. Right? You always helping people in the family. Did anybody send some Krispy Kreme donuts and coffee to your job? Or some Subway sandwiches? Mm. Giving you something while everybody riding off you? I'm telling you, man, people are... <sighs> entitled and messed up and as you grow and as you get bigger as you grow into finance or whatever your circle is going to get small That's because true. jealousy is real everybody ain't happy for you because in it when i first blew up on twitch man i had dudes that seen me grow see me work every day hustling live streaming going through all kind of turmoil with my family about how I, how I got to put in this work in order to be successful. Then later on, I don't have to work this hard. And now I don't. like. But at the start, I had to be here 24-7. But after a while, man, I was able to come on whenever I wanted to. And my, and my supporters, they was there with me. But, you know, you you had dudes that say they support you. But then they see you getting the success that they say they support. And then all of them, you know, they turn around and do a 360. Man, yeah, this dude, whoop, this dude, that, like. Wow, man, they change overnight when they see the growth coming. Then you do, uh, from from what I've experienced and from what I've seen with other people's success, there's a pocket of people that always almost try to make you feel guilty for your success when they was no part of your success. They have nothing to do with you being saying. Nobody helped you with your work, knowing your dumb ass can't do math like mm. me. Shout out to Donna Deuce because she helped me with my math. My mm. dumb ass can't do no math, boy. When I tell you, man, I was in there, they had to put me in a class with a motherfucker with some helmets on. <laughs> Mike Epps do that joke, talking about, teacher talking about, put y'all helmets on and take a nap. Mike Epps said, bitch, we 19. <laughs> that took me out. I understand that, because I had to take, take me a little special ed math, because math don't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. However, you know, um, everybody not going to be happy for you, man, and don't mm -hmm. feel guilty and set boundaries. If you have Facts. to boundary, man, black folks real. But the young, the young guys out here, man, the young ladies, man, people can be with you from the start, but that don't mean that they're going to stay with you. They can be right there when you started and they can be your most, your biggest supporter. But some people don't have any success going on in their own life. So they look at you and be like, yeah, it's not all that. When they was just as excited as you was when you started this mission on becoming better, becoming more. But as you did that, they just couldn't handle it because nothing was going great for them in their life. Because some people, they think that sitting down 
waiting on upstairs to come and save them. They think that's the route why you is out here putting in that work, trying to make something of yourself, trying to become something. They ain't putting in no work. They just sitting on their butt waiting. And the jealousy kick in, man. Good at making you feel guilty for setting boundaries. And, mm -hmm. if, any, and if anybody interrupt you while you're setting a boundary, mm. they don't have good intentions. Mm. If they don't allow you to set the boundary or they over talk you while you're trying to set the boundary, they don't have good intentions because they don't like what you're going to say. They don't like the fact that you say, hey, Thanks. you can't call my phone after 10 o'clock. I have to get rest. I have to be up at a certain time. Or you have to call me before you show up to my house or whatever because I might be doing something or I might be having mental or emotional issues. I might not want to be bothered. They hate when you set boundaries. They say, that's just how you are. You hmm. just kind of, we, we, know, we, we know how you are. Mm. You, when you, you're acting funny or whatever. You always... You always acting funny when you don't let folks do what they want to do. With your life. I just want people out there. There's a lot of good people out there, but don't be no fool. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Set boundaries. If you set boundaries and make a small space and a small circle, your life is going to be 100% better. It ain't for everyone. And, and you know, like I always preach, finding your circle, finding your friends. I'm not saying go out there and just collect people that are no good for you just to build an organization of friends. But I am saying we all as human want to be connected with others. So you're going to need to get out in the world and socialize. You're going to be friends, people that are no good for you. I learned this a lot in my life. I have made the mistake even to this day thinking that dudes really support you, really care about you, but all alone, man, they waiting on you to fall just as the rest. Like, this is real. But don't stop, don't let that stop you from going out in the world, making a friend, building a relationship with good people, because there are a lot of good people out here that take the hits of bad people, bad apples, you know? But we can't let that stop us, man. We still got to go out there. You can't let one bad relationship stop you from um meeting the love of your life come on everybody and it ain't for everybody to like you and Facts. it's okay because guess what the thing i uh, uh, uh somebody told me this a long time ago about birmingham yes yeah, people in birmingham don't like me but them ain't the niggas that come and sell out the star dome on a damn monday to see some karaoke mm. and i did the star dome and performed monday through monday and sold out three shows friday three shows saturday Two shows Sunday and then did Monday and started on a Monday. And oh. I did Tuesday. Clearly somebody liked them. You you see how that works? You can't put so much energy on the negative and who don't and wet this. Now, there's things you see anonymous respond to when it comes to my credibility. But for us, people that don't affect my credibility, don't affect my business, man, I don't got nothing to say to you. Think whatever you want to think. So, because I'm still going to be me, Anonymous 2K TV, the guy that puts in the work and, and achieve things in life. I go after goals. I achieve goals. I knock them down. I crush them. And I don't let nobody get in my way. Nobody. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday again, or whatever. Sold out. All the shows. So, the, so, so, and when, when people talk about that, like look call. at the caliber Business. of people that don't like you. Look at them. Look at what they got going on. Cause the, as long as the people that matter like you, then that's important. The people I do business with, some of my high school friends, some of my college friends, some of my frat brothers, all cues don't like me. That's fine. Cause just cause we know the same stuff. Or whatever, and and we we got the same affiliation, cause all of most of us are Christians, right? That don't mean we have to like each other or agree. It's just some it's just some cues that just wear the same Greek letters I wear, and they don't like me for setting a boundary, right? Hey, let me get a picture. How are you, sir? Nice to meet you. Ricky Smile in Spring, Sorrow Chapter Two Thousand Trade Dog. Talking about a picture. What's your name and what's your chapter? How you doing? Nice to meet you. I said, and I meant it. I stand strong on that, and I'm not bending. Oh, 94. That was, that was what the brother told me at the clay.
It was just hard. So he's mad at folks. All right. The other brother that was with him, he didn't like it. Kind of sit there. Just kind of give your ass a, a nasty look. Then you run into him again. They don't talk to you. But they don't like your ass because you're setting the boundaries. You have to train people how to treat you. Now, they might not like me, but they respect me, so they're probably not going to say nothing to me at all. Because they don't like me. That's fine. But they don't pay not one bill. They don't come over here. They don't cut this grass. They don't pay no bills. They ain't raised none of my kids. They ain't donated shit to what I got going on. And if they did come to a comedy show, I gave them a show. So I don't owe nobody shit. <laughs> I came to your show. I perform, nigga. We even. Everything else is extra. Think about some of that stuff before you let people manipulate you. A lot of people are master and mistresses of manipulation. Make you feel guilty for setting a boundary and make you feel guilty. And then make sure you smell up on your arm and check your breath every morning and make sure you intact and make sure you right before you go off on somebody. You understand? I say, okay, was it me? Okay, what did I do wrong? Okay, I was walking down the street. Okay, and this happened. And here's how I handled it. Let me think this through. I was walking down the street. And, that, and I don't just walk around knowing I'm right. But I know what I feel. And I know most of the people say, hey, dog, I'm Ricky Smiley Spring. Give him my name. I tell them, dog, my bad. Dog, Q dog, my bad. I apologize, bro. What's up, dog? Send this, send this, send this, chapter. Nice to meet you, bro. I apologize, dog. I'm cool, dog, Ricky Smiley. What's up? Chop it up. Ooh, ooh. But if you get offended when somebody correct you, that says a lot. What did that say about you? And what did it say about you if you don't correct people that invade your space? I ain't going around telling people how the fuck to be. But when what you do affect me, it's a conversation. Because you're going to have to be on, on some kind of level of respect when you approach me. I'm, I'm training you. If we're going to get down and be friends or be whatever, here's how it go. The lady's in the airport. Can I get a picture? How are you today? Nice to meet you. Because you're asking for something, right? Right? You're asking for something from me. Right? I'm not getting paid. I'm just walking down the hall at the airport. I don't care what nobody on the internet say. Well, people just excited. People know you're busy. Okay, if you know, if you think somebody's busy, leave them alone. Trying to use them lame excuses to justify entitlement and bullshit without having some manners. How are you today? It's simple. It don't take but a second. How are you today? When I go to Walmart, how are you today? Now, okay, I don't, answer, I don't say my name and shit, but how are you today, ma'am? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Can you tell me what aisle the barbecue sauce is on? Thank you kindly. Have a blessed day. You too. They be so happy. People in Walmart and Target be so happy. All you have to do is, how are you today? Get off the phone, you know. You know what I'm saying? You go up there and ring up your groceries. People trying to serve you. I'll call you back. How are you today? Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Here are my groceries. Yes, ma'am. Have a nice day. Thank you for your help. A simple act of kindness. Sometimes a little shit like that, it go a long way with people. Ask somebody how they doing. You don't know what somebody dealing with or going through. And if you're going through something, shit, if your mama died, you can still be respectful. I'm going through something. My mama just died. Okay. You walked up to me. You can still speak. I don't know that your mama died. <laughs> I apologize about that. You know what I'm saying? Okay, my mama died too. You want a picture, right? You want you want you want me to help you with something, or you want some information, whatever it is. You can say hi. How are you today? Mm. Common courtesy is gone. Everybody is it's a microwave generation. Everybody in a rush to get what they want to get, mm. and people don't even take the time to speak to people anymore. Wow. And 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 people that got wow, and and, and that's bro. I wow. I just went through this yesterday. Normally, I, I I try to feel out my neighbors before I go and bother them. I seen my neighbor yesterday, and I and I just I was walking around the community exercising, and I just said I gotta introduce myself because how do we build as people when we're afraid to connect and talk to each other? Now I talk to kids all the time because I'm trying my best to interact and and and, and be a, a role model to kids. So I seen my neighbor, man, and I finally, you know, 
Uh, they moved in probably a week ago, and I finally got a chance to, you know, to introduce myself and, you know, hey, how you doing? Hope you're having a great day, so and so. Yeah, man, it was, it was, it felt good. It felt good talking to the people you live next to. You know, like, come on, we, 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 we live next door to each other, and we still strangers. I don't want nothing. I just want to make sure that if something happened. I can be an of assistance. We can be a unit. We can be family. We don't have to be neighbors. We can be more, you know, and I think that's how you build a civilized community, in my opinion. Home training like I do, good ass old fashioned home training. See, it's a different. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all was raised by y'all mama, but I know a person when I meet him when they was raised by their grandparents. I can't explain it. Mm. It ain't nothing wrong with what your mom and daddy did, but when I meet niggas, Negroes. See, and that's why I said, and you know, you can believe what you want. COVID attacked a lot of our elders. A lot of our elders passed when COVID happened because grandparents had a special way about life, a special way about teaching, knowledge that they had. Parents don't have it. You know, we so into technology, we don't, we, we, we eat with our phones at the table. You, you, you know, it's so many distractions, but the grandparents not going for that. Cut that TV off when it's raining and thundering. You know, get over there and read something. You know, get somewhere and sit down, speak. Don't be talking when the elders are talking. You know, um, medicine, like they had so much to offer us. But when we lose the elders, we lose a way of knowing. We lose technology. We lose the importance of family. We lose all this. Who keep the family together? It's the grandparents. Mom and daddy don't do it. No disrespect. So, man, you know, we lose a lot of our cultural when we lose our elders. And that's why the grandparents are so much more respected and, and so much more loved it when it comes to the parents. Excuse me saying that I'm just talking. When I meet people that was raised by their grandparents, I automatically connect with them because they got a certain kind of home training and they operate in love when they approach you. You can tell. There's a young dude working at Birmingham Airport from Dade County, working Birmingham, moved to Birmingham from Miami. He worked in the airport. Woke up, hey, Mr. Smiley, how you doing, sir? Uh, my name is such and such. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Smiley. Didn't even ask for a picture or whatever. He said, um, would it be okay if I get a picture? I said, absolutely. I said, where you from? He said, I'm from uh, Miami. I said, Dade County, 99 Jan. He said, yes, sir, Mr. Smiley. He never said Ricky. Yes, sir, Mr. Smiley. I was about 32. I grew up listening to your morning show. All right, nice to meet you. Took the selfie. I said, let me ask you something. He said, yes, sir. I said, you was raised by your grandparents. Wait. He said, yes, sir. How did you know? I said, I can't explain it. I know. Mm. Good old-fashioned ass home training ain't never hurt nobody. And that's what I'm teaching Grayson. Good old-fashioned ass home training. It go a long way when you're on a movie set talking about some yes, sir, and no, sir, yes, ma'am, and being on time and being respectful mm. and being kind. Being on good time, morning, when being respectful. Good evening, all that kind of stuff. Damn, not only do he sell tickets, he's very mannerable and respectful. And that going to make people want to do business with you, especially... Older people, man, they gonna want to do business with someone that can be respectful, be on time, have good manners. You know, these are things that I try to instill in my daughters, you know, and uh, I think I do a great job. And my daughter, she say, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. My daughter looks you in the eyes when you're talking. And of course, she, being a kid, she tend to drop her head a little, but she know, daddy, keep that up there. Keep it up. Keep it up. Look them in the eyes. You know, speak like you know what you're talking about. If you don't know what you're talking about, shut your mouth and listen. You know, these are things that help you in life, man. And I think we all can learn a tool from a guy like Ricky Smiley, man. Y'all make sure y'all go check him out. Hit a like on that video, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Grateful, and I apologize for doing business on the phone. But like I said, when you're trying to improve, can't let nothing stand in your way. And now y'all got to still hear the man's words. The man here that we are watching, that, that, that you know, we're doing a reaction video to give you this knowledge from him. 
You know, everybody might not see his video. So they come and watch my video. They hear my take on it. And then you still get to hear the powerful message of the man. Y'all make sure y'all check him out. Ricky Smiley, man. Thank y'all. See y'all on the next one. Bello on the bello on the